You see, there's a big difference between conviction and convincing. If I convict you, I have touched something inside your spirit that you just feel that it's about time that I change from within. Because conviction touches something deep within you. And uh, you're able to make a clear decision that from today I've decided to change and I will never be the same again. But if I convince you, I can convince you right now and maybe somebody convinces you otherwise because convincing only touches the mind, but conviction touches the, the heart. And remember, we are saved from understanding which goes to the heart, from believing from the heart. The Bible says they have to understand with their hearts so that they can be converted. But you see, if I've just convinced you, I've convinced your mind. And convincing can fade out. And uh, why are people getting convinced instead of being convicted? Number one is because some of the pastors who are preaching to them, them themselves, they don't even have the Holy Spirit who convicts us. Do you know, like for example, Kenya, Kenya, for example, produces about 10,000 pastors every year graduating from Bible theological colleges. And the country is getting wicked and evil by the day. What is happening? 10,000 pastors graduating every year. Then the country is getting weird, weird. Homosexuals everywhere, killers, murderers, and all those other things everywhere. Why, why are people not changing? It is because the spirit of conviction is not there. People are just convincing each other. It's like you're being told, come to Jesus for some retirement package. Come and you shall get a good car, nice job, you know, good health and everything. You know, it's like a retirement package. That's what they are convincing you towards. They don't tell you that you're coming to Christ so that you can get eternal life. You see, prosperity teachers, what they are doing is that... <laughs> they, <laughs> let me just say this. True believers, when they preach to you, they are looking for your soul. Even Satan himself is looking for your soul. But for these prosperity teachers, they are looking for money. They are not looking for souls. And that's where the problem is. So there is no conviction. There is purely no conviction. And remember, unless you have the Holy Spirit, you can never convict anyone. Because it is the Spirit of God who convicts from within. And that's why the Bible says one plants, another waters, but it is God who makes it grow. All right? So listen to Jesus in the book of John, chapter 16, verse 7. He said to his, to his disciples, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient or important for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. All right. So what is it going to come? Uh, what will be the work of the comforter or the Holy Spirit? Verse 8, he says, and when he's come, when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. He will convict the world of sin or reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me and of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. You see? The work of the Holy Spirit will be to convict the world of sin, will be to be able to tell people, this is not right, this is right. And how can you, how can you have that when you don't have the Holy Spirit? Even Jesus said again in the book of John, chapter 6, verse 44, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent, uh, which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. So nobody can be able to come to God unless he's convicted by the Holy Spirit. My friends, there's a very thin line between conviction and convincing. And I'll give you a good example. Have you ever gone to a church whereby the singer who is singing in front there, he's singing some just weird songs, which you can't really tell is a gospel, is really what or what, but well, the music is so nice. Like there you listen to hill songs sometime. And, and the song is really going on very well, but the message in there, does it really glorify God? Does it really convict you? It's just like Mariah Carey singing or Celine Dion or some uh, this uh, love song people who are singing. And they sing some very nice song which touches your soul. And you're like, you can even cry listening to Mariah Carey. Wow, she sings so nice. But does it really touch the spirit? 
Does it connect you to God? No, it's only touching the soul, but not the spirit. But somebody else can sing a song which speaks to your spirit and you're able to feel, wow, I just want to live for God. I just want to do everything for God. I just want to do, give my whole life to God. Why? Because something has touched your spirit. And that's why the Bible says that the word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword, able to divide the thoughts, able to divide the, the bone and marrow, able to divide the soul and the spirit, is able to tell this one is touching the soul, this one is touching the spirit, and is the designer of thoughts. My friends, you have to be very keen. Are you being convinced or are you being convicted? Are you being convinced or are you being convicted in the church that you go? And if you're being convinced, just know it's they're only touching your mind, but not touching your heart. Because the heart is where we should, we should have everything in our hearts. It's very important with this. And I don't know if that one made sense to you, but most churches, they're only touching the mind. But where is the heart? Is your heart in God? 